Hi hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video I'll be showing you how I render hair within Clip Studio Paint. And I'd like to point out that this isn't like my consistent way of drawing hair. This was just an art study at first to see how I'd interpret drawing hair for myself from reference. So I'll just be explaining my thought process really. And if it helps you, then yay! It might be helpful if you don't really know where to start in terms of rendering hair. I hope it helps in some way. This will definitely help me for future reference on how to render hair because I do a lot of experimentation and my style changes depending on what inspires me I think. Let's get right into this then. So, as you can see, I've started sketching, just trying to get out the general head shape and what the back of this, back of the body looks like. Trying to make sure everything's in proportion. This sketch was like really rough and quick, by the way, because I'm not really focused on the anatomy here. I just want to do the hair. <laughs> I flip the canvas just to make sure that nothing looks out of place and of course it does so the handy liquify tool comes into play here and I just mold everything back to where it's meant to be. After I've got like this first rough sketch down I try to add in a few more details it wasn't really necessary and just clean it up with the second sketch. The main goal here was to just get down a really solid base or foundation for the hair really. And to give the drawing some context I guess because floating hair would be a bit concerning. <laughs> just to take a step out of the process and look at the brushes I'm using just to help those of you who aren't really sure what might be the best options for you. I usually go for the G-Pen or real G-Pen. Uh, this is a standard Clip Studio paintbrush so you can just find it in the tools section. And I use it for sketching and line art just because it's got a nice taper to it and it's like the bog standard, most simplest tool, I think. This next one I use for like stray hairs or satin textures in clothing. I think I mentioned it in one of my previous videos. This is downloaded from the Clip Studio Paint Assets store. I actually don't know the name of it. You're gonna have to try and find it if you want this brush because I don't remember where it is. If I do find it, I'll put it in the description. But for the next one, it's the brown mixing brush. It's I want to call it a squishy tool, <laughs> but it just blends really nicely, it's very smooth and you can easily change the opacity of it by adjusting your pen pressure. And then finally we have the soft airbrush, which just comes in really handy for covering large areas with, with a colour I guess. Hopefully I'll explain it in better detail later on in the video. Oh yeah, an extra tool for like specific stray hairs, sometimes I might use this brush, is this tool I downloaded from the asset store called the Thin Brush. And that's it. Since this isn't a tutorial on how to do line art, you're gonna see me fast forwarding a lot of the real time content here. But I do sketch out the main shapes, the main big shapes I can see in the hair. And then on top of my rough sketch, I do a cleaner outline the line art. Just to make sure I have like the format for where I'm going to put all the, the, the shading when I render. Also to make my life easier, you'll see me use the colour picker tool to get the colours I need from the reference onto my canvas. Just, it, it's so much simpler and quicker that way, I think. 
I'm not training myself to use colors here. I'm, I'm trying to render. <laughs> Give me those colors quick. But yeah, I move on to throwing in base colors, making sure that every gap is filled if necessary. You can see me fail to use the ink, close and fill tool because my line art is really messy. You should really only use it if, if you've got good clean why not it works better that way but i just i didn't want to fill it all in by hand i had to end up doing most of it that way anyways but a girl can try <laughs> when i'm coloring in the base color for the hair i do make sure it's on a separate layer from the skin tones layer just so i can clip any layers on top of it within that pink layer so nothing comes off onto the skin. It gets it, it clean. It cleans up the drawing for you, basically. And here you've got some sneak little content of me just cleaning up my boulders. No, cleaning up my layers, making sure it's all in the right folder, adding clipping masks to the pink layer as I mentioned before and then I use the soft airbrush to just glaze some glaze glaze are we, are we glazing donuts I meant I meant to spray <laughs> some ombre because as you can see from the reference this girl has two-toned hair I spray ombre black on the pink and get ready to add shadows with the ground mixing brush. I'm not focusing on like small details here, I'm just gauging where the light and the dark is and making sure I place down those shapes and then we can add the detail later. I do want to say that I really love the hairstyle here, I think it's so cute and I did say in my, my sketching phase that it was very rough. Maybe I could have tried to make these plaits look more like they do in the reference, but um, I still like the way it turned out with the thicker braids. It's all right. We get the gist of the hairstyle. Here you'll see me add a new layer and then change its settings to glow, glow dodge I think it was and I just add some more pink on top of it and it gives it like this hot pink colour but for me I can see like this pink, dark pink undertone under the light pink under the shadows if that makes sense from the reference so I just wanted to try and replicate that in my own style whether you do that it's up to you okay now comes the main the main eh, I don't know what to call it it's, it's the main bulk of rendering hair I guess like really honing in on the shadows and highlights and where the folds are especially in like braided hair you want to know what direction the hair is blowing in generally I start with shadows first and a good tip is to make sure your lines follow the flow of the direction of where the hair is going because then it, it it makes sense where the hair is falling that way and I start, I start with shadows, so I go from dark to light, switching between the base colour, this peachier pink, well, no, it's not even a pink, is it? It's, it, it is peach, like skin tone colour. It is quite a repetitive process of just figuring out where the lights and darks are, but there are like fun little bits, like there's a peach rim light near where her fringe starts, that was quite nice to add. 
I do love a cheeky little bit of rim lighting. <laughs> And from the example I'm showing of me finishing half of the head of adding sh shadows and highlights, you can see the difference is a lot more detail in the right half compared to the left half, which just has like base shadows and highlights. There's not really much detail. And when I say adding detail, I really wanted to keep the rendering of the hair simple, like anime style still, but with a with enough detail that it looks like hair. Since we're coming up to like the final stages, we get to add what I like to call the extra sheen. <laughs> it's just like the really exaggerated no blending on these sharp highlights that make the piece pop. I did get comments on my Instagram saying that by the end of my hair that I'm drawn, was kind of giving like the look of licorice <laughs> and I, I couldn't argue with that it's, it's kind of true but I think it looks cool still you could see me change from the like stark bright blinding white highlights to a light grey colour on the black just because by the time I started drawing the highlights on the black parts of the hair it looked Kind of awful, like way too bright in contrast, so I, I did tone it down with the light grey. Finally, I can use the mystery stray hairs brush that I have acquired from the asset store to just add the little wispy bits. <laughs> I move this layer above my line arm because I kind of want it to blend in with the the hair and that black line on the line art just makes it look a bit odd I think but I was just experimenting I don't know I think it still looked cool usually I change the color of the line art from black to like a sepia brownish colour just so it looks a lot more natural and so you don't notice it that much but I don't think I did that for the end of this one you do have to be careful not to go too overboard with stray hairs because they can really make or break the okay, I want to say the realism of the hair but I was trying to stick quite closely to the reference in terms of stray hairs this time. Sometimes I'd get a bit creative, like near the fringe. There wasn't much stray hairs going on there, but I added some anyway. But in the braids, it was definitely, you could see the bits that were sticking out. It was quite messy and I wanted to incorporate that in. Without the stray hairs looking odd, if that makes sense. <laughs> Here's the full time lapse of the process from start to finish. If you're curious. <laughs> and that's it for this tutorial. Well, study, I should say. <laughs> if you've learned something, please do let me know in the comments. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. Maybe I'll do more of these. But really, this was just me sitting down to do 
quick study because currently I can't lie I'm at a place with my art where I just I don't know anymore <laughs> I want to find an art style but I kind of want to call it an art slump like I don't know what I'm doing anymore so I've resulted to a spin the wheel challenge that forces me to just draw something basically <laughs> Let me know if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I'll be signing off guys. See ya! Bye bye!